What's going on guys? So it is day two, which is actually a pretty cool day, both in terms of temperature as well as the fact that now we have some clouds covering the sun, which gives us some diffused light. But unfortunately, the side effect of that is it feels significantly colder today than yes. it did yesterday. It's, and it he, is colder. And he's dressed super light. I'm not <laughs> I'm not getting this. No gloves. I'm wearing gloves and everything. And and it's actually cold. He even said it's cold. So It is cold, but yeah, whatever. I manage. Yeah, yeah. We do what we need to do, right? So I am still out here at ROA Off-Road at their Experience Center. And uh, we're taking a look at some crazy cool off-road campers. And among those is this new Scout truck camper that they just recently picked up. So we're gonna take a closer look at this, see what it's all about. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so we have Shane back with us. Shane is one of the owners of uh, ROA Off-Road out here, and he is gonna take us on a guided tour of this really cool Canadian-built uh, truck camper, oh, yeah. right? They're originally out of Canada. They've been in business for actually going on almost 50 years. It's really cool. It's a generational company. The grandfather, father, the son is now the CEO of this company. And they are actually headquartered in Washington, Yakima now. Very cool. Is where they're manufacturing them. They have three different models. Obviously, this is a truck camper. They have the Kenai, the Olympic, and the Yoho. And they're pretty light. You can the Yoho will fit in a midsize like a Tacoma. Okay. Very light. Wow. This one right here is kind of their most luxurious one, and it is uh, also the heaviest one. Uh, really cool. They're they're made for off grid, and they throw in a lot of nice options for you. They have this new diesel heater. Okay, so that does look cool. But one thing I'm noticing about this unit that kind of stands out is it's it's very simplistic. There's not a lot of stuff going through it. It doesn't have as much stuff as you see on some of them. And and currently, if you see some arms right here, they're actually putting the awning away because it got really windy out here. But yeah, they're, they're not doing as much on the outside of these units as you see on a lot of truck campers, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. They're they're really made for the off-road, right? And yeah. The more stuff you put on them, the heavier they, they get. And then you need a dually. And duallys are not the best off-road trucks. So they're kind of going for more of that minimalistic and, and lightweight to get it off-grid and off-road. Brother, there is some guy right now in Texas that has a Ram... 3500 dually that has a 14 inch lift kit on it running 44 is going <laughs> off-road you don't know what you're talking I'm about not, i'm not saying you can't <laughs> go off-road i've gone off-roading in a dually but it's not recommended it's not yeah, as nice as your power wagon. well that's not what it's built for yeah. it's not if you build it for that well then of course you've customized it but uh, a couple questions before we go into this unit do we know what the dry weight is on it yeah the dry weight on this this one right here is 1265 pounds well 12 that is super light so yeah, yeah a lot of truck campers including the uh, notorious truck camper that was viewed around the world that split a ram frame in half i think that was probably like almost six thousand pounds or more so 1200 pounds this is very conceivably half ton loadable yeah and this is their heaviest one keep wow. in mind they have the olympic that's just over a thousand and then their um yacht Yoho and that one's eight, just over 800 pounds. Wow, so yeah, these are relatively lightweight, especially for truck campers. All right, so 1,200 pounds, so conceivably speaking, you know, whenever you load this thing up, you're you're not gonna be like crazy loading this thing up, right? You might throw a couple hundred pounds worth of stuff inside of it. Do we know if it has holding tanks on it? Uh, no, it doesn't have actually a holding tank. It has some water, well, it does have some water tank inside, okay. but not like underneath. But not like a, a full like truck camper holding tank with like no, 30 gallons, with, 40 gallons of water. No, it does not. So right here, you do have a cassette toilet that slides out. Okay. You do have an onboard toilet. And then on the inside, as you'll see, there's a water uh, container where oh, you okay. have a sink. So you'll fill it up and- take So even when out. you load this thing up, it's not gonna have a heck of a lot of weight inside no, of it. No, it's gonna be kind of like, you're gonna wanna go off of your truck's payload capacities, right? Got it. That's kind of what you wanna do with it. So if you have 1,400 pounds worth of payload or 1,600 pounds, then you're just gonna take the 1,200 off of that and whatever's left is really it's considerably worth. for whatever you bring with you and the people inside the vehicle. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. Well, it's cold out here. Let's hop inside and see what this thing's all about. Okay. Okay, so is there a step system? It's kind of low, but when it's in the back of a truck, it might sit a little higher. Yeah, you'll have a step system that you can get put on. Um, right now, we don't have it out yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Right here, this is a shower, actual shower pan area. Oh, wow. And it actually, uh, there's a curtain that you attach to the Yeah, loop. yeah, I see the loop rings up there. And then you kind of have a nice base here. It's also good for like dirty shoes and stuff. Cleaning this, your dog off. Exactly. And yep. you can go ahead and- Yeah, let's hop in. Wow, this is actually 
spacious inside. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's a good amount of space. Oddly enough, you know, and, and what I like about this is, you know, you see a lot of truck campers that in some ways just feel like smaller versions of travel trailers and they they still give you the same cheap feeling cabinets the same cheap feeling components but this has a very 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 nice tough feel to it like the woods are all solid woods undermount stainless steel sink well and uh, one of the things that scout has done and i think this has been key to them making a better product is they've been modeling the overland off-road so if you go to any of the overland shows they're always there and I, and I see the CEO walking around looking at some of the off-grid overland stuff, which tend, they tend to put a lot better stuff. It's not like they're going to Indiana and mm -hmm. copying you know, the yeah. big manufacturers. They're copying the small mom and pop shops that are putting quality components in it. And that's kind of where you get the real wood. They also do a, a full composite wall, so they're not using aluminum frames anymore. Yeah. This is all composite material. Uh, and this is this is your water, right? So you just yeah. have the sink right here. What's that about five gallons worth, roughly? Yeah, yeah. So that's very cool. It's a five-gallon tank. And then you have the uh, really cool acrylic windows, right? Are they Lexan? Are they? It's acrylic? a polycarbonate. I think the Eurovisions they say they're like a polycarbonate. Acrylic okay. Blend. So you got your polycarbonate acrylic blend windows, dual pane windows. Dual pane windows. Um, and you know something that's kind of interesting. A lot of people don't realize if this were your typical single pane glass, you'd feel the cold air coming in right oh, yeah. through it. You, and people often like to say, "Well, there's not a heck of a lot of R value here," but any R value at all is better than kind of that negative value that the window gets when it gets freezing cold and it turns into like an ice box. Oh yeah, right? and and these these do. I've been in very cold temps with these windows, and they do hold a good amount of they have a thermal blockage right mm -hmm. plus this when you close these at night that gives that more uh even more R value yeah because it has the aluminum gap. on the other side yeah very cool all sorts of little tie downs and securement points up top yeah you can put on uh some beds that you have a large bed up here mm -hmm. um this turns into a bed down here one of the really cool things that they have is this porthole up here that opens up and you can actually access the tent, the rooftop tent from inside here. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. This thing is super cool. So this turns into kind of a bench seating, I'm, I'm imagining. Um, or maybe not. Maybe it's just two people here, one person here. And then whenever you put the board here, that you fold the then seats you flat turn, and you get your bed. Yeah, you turn into a bed. A lot of storage under here. Got some storage over here. And again, the limitation to, to where you can take this is dependent on where you can take your vehicle, right? Yeah, that's what's really cool. And they, you know, because they're so light, you put it in the bed of your truck and clearance is going to be your biggest thing, right? Load hanging yep. branches. Other than that, you can, you can take these almost anywhere. Yeah, no, that is absolutely cool. And over here, this is where you would put the refrigerator. Okay, uh, like a Truma style refrigerator? Yeah, like a Truma style, yeah, 12 volt. And then you also have a gas port here for... Uh, your propane yeah. uh, burner. So you can get a cooktop in here as well. And they actually run everything th through Go Power. So you do have a big lithium battery bank and then also a solar port where you can be able to charge your. Yeah, this is one of those kind of cool nifty power stations that I've done a lot of reviews on different versions of these. And you know, I was, I was actually kind of wondering when the RV industry was gonna adopt kind of using one of these as the main power supply because they're so cool. They're lithium iron phosphate. They have the ability to accept solar. They have the ability to, to charge just about anything you have. They include 110 outlets on them. They have 12 volt outlets on them. They have all sorts of different ways to connect different things to them. And again, I, I was just kind of curious as to when, you know, RV manufacturers were going to put these things in. So that's really cool to see that. Yeah. And one of the things is these are, well, we can get to the price question later, but they're reasonably priced for a truck camper. And I think one of the reasons is just the way they've designed it with the entire battery system is right there. So yeah. they're, not, they're not running electrical lines through the walls and outlets and having converters and all of mm -hmm. those different components that just add up over time. It's a one system right there. And you can take that out and use it externally, I imagine yeah. too. So, yeah, exactly. you know, that's really nice as well. Yeah. And then the new 2023 model have these front windows um the older models don't have those well that's nice and especially from a security perspective as well you know you're out camping you're not in your truck anymore and having the ability to see what's kind of going on around you situational awareness when you're yeah. out in the middle of nowhere is hugely important yeah, so absolutely. yeah absolutely very very cool so let's let's talk price we can't really talk off-road capability because again that's all based on the vehicle you have this in um, true. so from a price point perspective well 
What's reasonably priced? What's what's your goal? Do you want me to guess, or do you just want to? Oh yeah, wanna... yeah. I thought you were gonna guess. You well, were guessing the other ones. I'll try to guess. Um, it's gonna be hard, man, because guessing on this means that I may shoot low or I may shoot really high. And if I shoot low, then people are gonna think, well, that's what JD thinks it's worth. And <laughs> that's not the case because I don't do a lot of truck campers, and the ones I've done tend to be very large, and you know they they're priced accordingly. So I'm I'm gonna say 1,200 pounds does not have a lot of the onboard appliances that some may have but you do have the that battery pack down there which those battery packs are not inexpensive um i'm gonna guess 35 grand okay you're pretty close and it, it all depends on how you option it you can go to our website and we'll give you uh pricing well real quick you guys do a ton of customization out here, and I know that we talked about it with some of the other units we went through where they put a sink where an RV didn't have a sink. They yes. put a refrigerator where an RV didn't have a refrigerator. Could you all do something like that to this as well? So if I wanted to buy this unit and I'm like, I want a refrigerator right here. Yeah, absolutely. I want a microwave in here. Absolutely, you know. absolutely. We pretty much do anything like that. So that's something that makes us very unique is we kind of retrofit and mod okay. pretty much all of our campers that we sell. Okay. so. Base model, let's just say, and, and you, I'm sure you have an approximation of, you know, a cool package that you would build into this. So have that in the back of your mind, like as an option package real quick. But, yeah. okay, well, what's the price so, of this? So on this one, you're you're right around the $30,000 price range. Okay, so, so I wasn't too far off. what you were at. Yeah, and they, and they have two other campers. This is the most expensive one, like I mentioned. Okay. And one of the cool things about Scout is you, you actually go to their, their website and they have a build. You know, oh, that's uh, and cool. you just yeah. actually go in there and click your options and you submit the order and they actually will contact you and say, hey, your order submitted and put you on the time, whatever time slot it is. And when it's ready, they ship it out to the closest dealer that you live next oh, to. Oh, very cool. And you yeah. come and pick it up. Well, that is awesome. So 30 grand. Okay. Now the magic that you would pour into this, if, if I was like, you know what? I want this. I want you to make it something special. You go at it. What, what, what do you think it would cost to make it special? Um, I, you know, special is different for everybody. I think one of the biggest requests that we're going to get is an air conditioning unit. It does not mm -hmm. have an air conditioning unit. Um, and there's a lot of different options out there. So I would say add an air conditioner and this thing is pretty special. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's true. Cause you'll have your Truma fridge, your Truma fridge right here. And you guys sell that fridge. Yeah. We sell the too, fridge. So. Yeah. And that's, yeah, it's, that's not optioned with the fridge, but you can add the fridge, yeah. but it has the heater, a diesel heater, very good, good heater. Um, it has all, for the most part, it has everything you need to go off grid. Yeah. And you could add a microwave to it or something like that oh, yeah, too. That and you can even upgrade easily. your power supply. That, that's, that's something because of how it's in, it's not like wired in, right? So yeah. you could, you could easily go to a larger battery bank or something like that if you wanted to. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Well, this thing is super cool and I'm glad that we're not outside right now because it's cold and a little windy out there as well, but it's actually very comfortable in here, yeah, which is, is really nice. Yeah. Anyways, guys, um, definitely take a look at their YouTube channel because have you guys had a chance to make any really cool off-road content with this yet? Uh, not with the Scout as much as our other, you know, we're, we really deal with a lot of travel trailers, off-road travel trailers. Yeah. We have tons of off-roading videos. We haven't done a lot with these, but we do have tours of everything else and some cool stuff. So it's ROA off-road very cool youtube channel guys if you haven't had a chance take a moment subscribe to both of the channels give us a thumbs up and uh we'll be back to talk to you again with a really cool little tiny kind of a teardrop trailer